My dear students, in this video, I am going to derive some theorems on independent events. See, there are two events, E and F are two events given. And in this diagram, then diagram you can see, this is event E and this is event F. That this part is E intersection F, common both for both E and F. And this area, this is not in F, but in E. Therefore, it is E intersection F dash. This part is E intersection F dash. And in this part, it is not in E, but in F. Therefore, it is E dash intersection F. This area is E dash intersection F. And this part is E intersection F dash. Now, the area out of E union F, this E and F, this is total sample space in that the area not covered by E and F is called E dash intersection F dash. So, the part outside the E and F is called E dash intersection F dash. So, from this diagram, we can consider if the event E and F are independent, E and F are independent events, then we have to prove that E and F dash are also independent. E and F dash are also independent. You know from the definition of independent event, if E and F are independent events, we know that P of E intersection F is equal to P of E into P of F. This is the concept of independent events. P intersection, the probability of E intersection F is equal to the probability of E into probability of F, since the event E and F are independent. Now we have to prove that, to prove that E and F dash are independent, we have to prove that probability of E intersection F dash equal to probability of E into probability of F dash. And by the same definition, we have to prove that E and F dash are independent. For that, we have to prove that P of probability of E intersection F dash equal to probability of E into probability of F dash. This is our theorem 1. So, we know that the event E, that event E is a union of E intersection F and E intersection F dash. These two parts, E intersection F and E intersection F dash, these two parts covering the event E. Therefore, E is equal to E intersection F union E intersection F dash. The event E intersection F and E intersection F dash, union of these two events constitute the event E. Therefore, by definition, probability of E equal to because they are mutually exclusive events also. Therefore, probability of E equal to probability of E intersection F plus probability of E intersection F dash. E intersection F and E intersection F dash are mutually exclusive. Therefore, probability of E is equal to probability of E intersection F plus probability of E intersection F dash. From this expression, I get probability of E intersection F dash is equal to probability of E minus probability of E intersection F. You bring this probability of E intersection F to the front side, you will get probability of E intersection F dash equal to probability of E minus probability of E intersection F. We know that E and F are independent, therefore probability of E minus probability of E intersection F is probability of E intersection F is probability of E into probability of F, because E and F are independent events. So from this, I can take probability of E as a common term, these two, containing probability of E, therefore taking probability of E as a common term, you will get, or taking probability of E here, you will get 1 minus probability of F. You know 1 minus probability of F is probability of F dash, because this is 1 minus P of F is complement event of F, therefore probability of F dash. Therefore 1 minus P of E is probability of F dash into probability of E. So probability of E into second F dash equal to probability of E into probability of F dash we have derived, therefore E and F dash are dependent events. That's all about this book out. Now the theorem 2, the next theorem is if E and F are independent events, then we have to prove that E dash and F are independent. Next theorem is E dash and F are independent. 
e dash and f are independent. If e and f are independent events, so you know that e and f are independent events. We know that probability of e intersection f equal to probability of e into probability of f. To prove that e and e dash and now we have to prove that e dash and f are independent. For that we have to prove that. <coughs> We have to prove that P of E probability of E dash intersection F is equal to probability of E into probability of sorry probability of E dash into probability of F. See this is can be this can be proved from the previous theorem itself. By the same method we have followed in the previous theorem, we have to prove this result. We can prove probability of e dash intersection f equal to probability of e dash into probability of f. This is the next theorem. Okay. Now in the third theorem, the theorem three states that if e and f are independent events, then we have to prove that e dash and f dash, e dash and f dash are also independent. That's the theorem three. E and f are independent, then e dash and f dash are also independent. For that, we have to prove that probability of e dash intersection f dash is equal to probability of e dash into probability of f dash. We have to prove this. This is this what we have to prove because if e and e dash and f dash are independent, we have to prove that probability of e intersection e dash intersection f dash is equal to probability of e dash into probability of f dash. To prove this result, we consider to prove that. Probability of e dash intersection f dash probability of e dash intersection f dash equal to what is e dash intersection f dash e dash intersection f dash is the event e dash intersection f dash is f dash is e union the whole dash this is nothing but e union f. This is nothing but e dash intersection f dash is equal to u e union f the whole dash. We can say e dash intersection f dash is equal to e union f the whole dash. The remaining area. Therefore, this is first e dash union f dash is equal to you. We you know that e union f the whole dash. By De Morgan's law, e dash intersection of dash equal to e union f with whole dash. This is De Morgan's law, you know. This is nothing but p of a dash is one minus p of b. Therefore, this is one minus. Ah, you can write it uh, taking probability. Now, probability of e dash intersection of dash equal to probability of e union f dash. Sorry, e union f the whole. That is equal to probability of e union f whole dash is one minus p of e union f by property of complement rule. P of a dash is equal to one minus p of a. So like that, p of e union f whole dash is equal to one minus p of e union f. You know that one minus p of e union f is by the rule. P of e union f is zero. P of e plus p of f. Minus p of e intersection f. That is equal to one minus p of e plus sorry again minus into plus minus p of f and minus into minus plus p of e intersection f. Since e and f are independent events. We know that this is equal to one minus p of e, one minus p of e minus p of f. Plus, since e and f are independent events, p of e intersection is p of e into p of f. Okay. Now. <coughs> You consider this one minus p of e as it is. 
and minus p of f can be you can take p of f as a common term you can take from these two terms you can take minus p of f of zero with one if you take plus and minus we take again common as minus into plus is minus you can take p of f as common term you will get only p of e okay now from these two expressions one minus p of e is that this is one minus p of e and here also one minus p of e therefore in the left hand side you have p of e dash intersection of dash equal to you can take one minus p of e as a common term one minus p of e as a common term i can take i will get if i take one minus p of e i will, get, I will take out i get one as a common term so this one minus p of e if i take outside i will get as a common term one minus this is one minus p of f on taking one minus p of e as a common term you will get one minus p of f only so this is one minus p of e you know p of e dash and this is one minus p of f is you know p of f dash so p of e into such a dash you will do p of e dash into p of f dash we derive so one minus p of e dash into such a dash equal to p of e dash into p of f dash we derive the concept therefore e dash and the f dash are independent that's all about the book work okay now let us solve some problems using those theorems and problems on independent events the first problem it is in your textbook in the exercise 13.2 The fourth problem states that a fair coin and a die are tossed. A fair coin and a die are simultaneously tossed. There, there are two events referred. One, the event A is the event head appears on the coin. Consider the event A is the head appears on the coin. If you toss a coin and a die, head appears on the coin is the event A, A, and the three appear on the die is the event B. Now check whether the event A and B are independent or not. Let's solve the problem. So sample space consisting of if you toss both coin and die simultaneously, if coin shows H, die uh, die shows one. H comma one, H comma two, H comma three, H comma four, H comma five, H comma six. On crossing a coin and a die, if a coin shows head, die shows all the three x six numbers. Similarly, die shows tail comma one, tail comma two, t comma three, t comma four, t comma five, t comma six. These are the twelve events outcomes in the sample space. total outcomes in the sample space of 12 and even a is head appears on the coin this is number n of s is 12 a is the even head appears on the coin that is a is h comma 1 h comma 2 h comma 3 h comma 4 h comma 5 and h comma 6 Okay, these six events, six, six outcomes are in the event A, and B is the event three appear on the die. H comma three, three appear on die is H comma three, and similarly T comma three. These are the two outcomes in the event B. H comma three and T comma three are the three appear on the die only. What is A intersection B? A intersection B. H comma three is in both A and B. So this is the only event. And now A intersection B is one. 
extra margin only. Now we have to check whether the event A and B are independent for that. P of A intersection B equal to P of A into P of B. We have to prove for A and B are independent event. We have to prove that P of A intersection B equal to P of A into P of B. For that, okay. What is P of A? Probability area is six by twelve. Number of events on outcomes on A is six. Six by twelve. That is what. One by two. Similarly, what is probability of B? B is two by twelve. Number of events in B is two. So two by twelve. That is equal to one by six. What is probability of A intersection B? Intersection B consisting of only one event. Therefore, this is one by two. So our formula P of A intersection B is one by twelve is equal to what is P of A one by two. What is P of B one by six. So one by twelve is equal to one by two and one by six. Is it true or not? It is true because one by twelve equal to one by two and one by six is. One by two into six. One into one. One by two into six is twelve. One by twelve equal to one by twelve. Both are same. Therefore, P of A intersection B is one by twelve, and P of A into P of B is also one by twelve. Therefore, P of A intersection B is P of A into P of B. Therefore, the events A and B are independent. Let's solve the problem. Okay. So the next problem is given that the two even A and B are such that P of A probability of A is one by two, and probability of A union B is three by five, and probability B is given as P. We have to find out the value of P if A and B are mutually exclusive. Second case is if A and B are independent. First one, if A and B are Mutually exclusive. Mutually exclusive. If A and B are mutually exclusive, it means that P of A union B equal to P of A plus P of B. If A and B are mutually exclusive, probability of A union B equal to probability of A. Plus probability of B. P of A union B given by three by five. Probability of A is one by two. We want probability of B that is P. So this is three by five minus one by two equal to P. So taking LCM ten, two three are six minus five one is five. That is equal to P. P equal to one by ten. Therefore P equal to six minus five one by ten. That's all. If A and B are mutually exclusive, P of A union B equal to P of A plus P of B. P of A union B three by five. P of A is one by two plus P of B is P. On from this expression, P equal to three by five minus one by two. Simplification will get P equal to one by ten. Similarly, the second case. Second case, A and B are independent. A and B are independent. In this case, P of A intersection B equal to P of A into P of B. We know we want P P of A intersection B first. We know that P of A union B equal to P of A plus P of B minus P of A intersection. B. From this, we have to determine P of A intersection B. That is, P of A union B is given by three by five. P of A is one by two. P of B is P. We don't know P of A intersection B. So from this, P of A intersection B equal to. You bring this minus P of A intersection B to the right side. You will get one by two minus three by five plus P. That is equal to 10 LCM. Pi two sub 10. Why? What is that? 